Now, uh, they look a little bit like this. Uh, there's a vertical bar and then like 3x plus 2 uh, minus 7 equals 4. And sometimes, heck, they might even have a number out here like 5 times 3x plus 2 minus 7 equals 4. Anyways, that's a pretty advanced absolute value equation, so we'll start off with something more simple. In fact, we really kind of need to start off with the definition of what an absolute value is. So first, let's look at this. This says absolute value of 3. And I'd like you to take a moment and think to yourself, what is that? Based on your, your uh, prior knowledge regarding absolute values. Many people believe that this is negative 3 but it's not. It's actually positive 3. And the reason why is because absolute values don't change the sign of the, the expression that's within. Absolute values make whatever the expression that is within, they make it positive. So um, a positive 3 does not become a negative 3. However, if we have a negative 3, inside the absolute value signs. The absolute value signs will make the negative 3 into a positive. So the next, uh, there is an interesting question that arises from this is what if we wanted to know if we were given this uh, equa absolute value equation, absolute value of x equals 3, what's the value of x? Now in the past when solving equations there are times where you only find one value for the variable. In this particular case, there's actually two possible values. And since there's two values we, uh, that will make this statement true, we call each of them a solution. So there's two solutions to this equation. And you might have guessed that they come from what we see up here, is that if I put a positive 3 in for x, I get 3 over here. If I put a negative 3 in for x, then I get a positive 3 over here. So therefore, to solve this equation, I simply say x equals positive 3, comma, negative 3. Now, there's a number of ways to write this. This is, this is my preferred um, format. Uh, you could write 3 and negative 3. Some people also write uh, plus or minus 3, but I'm going to hold off on that. I want you to see that there's two distinct answers. We're going to use this in the future. So let's expand on this. What if we have, here's another example for you. Call this example 1. Um, what if we have something like absolute value of x minus 3 equals 5? Okay, first, the very first thing I want to say here is, is that a commonly made mistake is that people want to, to change this into x plus 3. You cannot do that, and there's no need to do it. Um, the absolute value does not change the sign of all the different things that are inside the absolute value signs. It just takes the final result and makes sure that it's positive. So, what we're going to do is instead we're going to go back to what we, we learned in this first slide. We're going to take the idea that if I have an absolute value equation, there's going to be two separate values. And in fact, another way I could have written this is uh, x equals 3 or x equals negative 3. That's how we're going to approach this absolute value equation. We're going to say, hey, um, Whatever is inside here, let's, let's pretend for a moment that we don't know that there's x minus 3. Whatever is in here, it's got to be either positive 5 or negative 5 in order to get a 5 over here. So x minus 3 must be either positive 5 or negative 5. So x minus 3 must either equal 5 or x minus 3 equals negative 5. In other words, those are the two results that we get from this. And these are each equations that, that are relatively simple to solve. So um, we add 3 to both sides, and when we do, we get x equals 8. And over here, we add 3 to both sides, and when we do, we get x equals, what is it, 3 plus negative 5? Yeah, negative 2. And we'll say or. Now, either one of these is the answer. Another way to write this is x equals negative 2, comma, 8. 
um, and then we could box that as our final answer. <clears throat> now, even though there's a comma there, some people might think that this is an ordered pair with x and y. It's not. It's simply two values that, that are possible solutions for this equation, two values of x, just like we see here and here. All right, let's take a look at a slightly more interesting example. Um, let's go ahead and see what happens if we have a number times an absolute value. Here, one might think, well, geez, I got a 3 out in front. And by the way, that does mean 3 times the absolute value of x minus 1. But we do not want to. <clears throat> distribute the 3 times the x and the 3 times the negative 1. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to isolate the absolute value. The way we do that is we divide the entire left-hand side by 3. And we divide the entire right-hand side by 3. And when we do that, the 3's cancel, and we're left with absolute value of x minus 1 equals 3. From there, we go back to the technique that we used in the last slide, and we break up uh, this equation into two separate equations. So we will say either x minus 1 equals 3, which that, that's true. If I put a 3 in for x minus 1, I'd get this. Um, or we say x minus 1 equals negative 3. And then we solve those two equations. And here we get x equals 4. And over here we add 1 to both sides. We get negative 2. And we could box that. Now I'd like it, um, for students in my class, I'd like it if you always box your answers. I'm going to stop doing that because it, it's uh, not that easy for me to draw it. Um, let's take a look at another example and uh, let's see what happens here. So here's example 3. What if we have something like 3 times x minus 5 um, plus 7 equals 2? Well, again, the goal here is to try to isolate the absolute value symbol, the x minus 5 in absolute values. And one way to visualize this to make it easier on yourself is kind of pretend like the x minus 5 in absolute values is just a variable. So what if we had something like 3y plus 7 equals 2? If you're familiar with how to isolate the variable and solve for it here, you can use the same technique with this equation above. So what we would do here is we do minus 7 minus 7 from both sides, and then we get 3y equals negative 5, divide both sides by 3, and that gets us y equals negative 5 thirds. Okay, so that's what we would do if, uh, if we could go all the way through and solve this. In this particular case, we're going to discover that, unfortunately, um, we, cannot. we cannot. The problem with this equation is when we go to subtract 7 from each side, what happens is we get 3 times the absolute value of x minus 5 equals negative 5. And uh, just to do like we did in the last one, we'll divide both sides by 3. And when we do, we get x minus 5 equals negative 5 thirds. Well, the problem here is not that we have a fraction. The problem is, is that we have a negative number. If you recall the rules regarding absolute value, um, the, the, ab the result of an absolute value can never be negative. For this reason, this particular example is an example of where um, when you try to solve an absolute value equation, you get no solution. In other words, um, it's very important um, that we realize what this means. Don't just think about, the, don't just think, oh, if I get a negative number here, it's no solution. The, the more important thing is, is to realize that no solution means that there's no value of x that I can put in, in here that's going to make this statement true. Because no matter what value of x I put in here, um, the absolute value can never be negative. So that's why we say no solution. Sometimes in the answer book, um, you, or in the textbook, you might see something like this. 
and that is the symbol for the empty set and uh, when we're talking about solutions we usually talk about sets of solutions so in this particular case if our set of solutions is empty we have an empty set so this is this is the way uh, another way of saying no solution um, for me in my class I'd prefer that we write out no solution 